I took this photo uh, on one of my, my many trips to Macon over the years. It's, it's relatively recent. I can't even remember when I took it. Um, but it's a mural, public mural, outside of Capricorn Studios, which has now uh, been preserved. Macon, Macon's uh, Mercer University has preserved it as part of a much larger project. And um, uh, this mural has gone up in honor of really the, 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 the triumvirate of, of Capricorn Records and uh, built around Dwayne Allman uh, and uh, his vision for music. Phil Walden uh, being the manager, uh, an organizer, business person, and of course, Greg Allman led the Allman Brothers, or at least fronted the Allman Brothers when they were at their absolute peak um, after Dwayne died. Uh, so this mural commemorates all of that. And what it really does for me, though, when I look at it, uh, is remind me of this quote, and I posted this on some other socials, uh, from um, about Phil Walden and, and kind of his role in at Fillmore East, at least pushing hard for it to be as successful as it could. So he says, Dwayne said we needed the freedom of a live album. That'll get people that don't see us in person an opportunity to really hear what the Allman Brothers are all about. Phil said it was an absolutely brilliant idea. Then he said, after they recorded the album, we wanted to make it a double LP. Jerry Wexler, his partner, said, this is nonsense. You have cuts here that are 25 minutes long. You've got to edit this thing. Cut it down to a single album. Otherwise, we're not going to put it out. I said, now let me tell you the other part of this thing. This is what Walden said. Let me tell you the other part of this thing. Our image is that this is the people's band. Music is for the people, and therefore we want to make this specially priced. And what that was, was he wanted to sell the double album for the price of a single album. Jerry Wexler said, are you fucking crazy? When that album came out, Walden says, it was a massive, massive hit. This was really an expression of their region, their environment, their culture. For the first time in rock, Southern guys were making music and living in the South. All sum total, uh, every musician, at least in this era, that achieved any success, which meant living as a musician rather than doing music as a side gig, I suppose, but, but in the Allman Brothers case, astounding commercial success, had people like Phil Walden behind them to help promote and market their music as it goes forward. Now, don't nobody needs to what about me about Phil Walden and money issues that come later. I wrote an entire book about Dwayne Allman and uh, I reference it multiple times. I talk about it all the time at the Long Live the ABB Substack. And if you go to my YouTube, which is at Long Live the ABB, uh, my YouTube channel, you'll see all kinds of discussion on this issue. But in this early era, at least until uh, uh, the first breakup, Walden was a, a genuine uh, hero in this story and, and really remains so despite the shenanigans uh, that uh, happened money-wise with the band, which, which I've talked about, like I said, and I'll continue to talk about when the time's appropriate. Uh, so this is uh, Phil Walden, whose vision, uh, this is the People's Band. That's a theme that I love to hammer home because I'd never heard it before I heard it in this particular quote uh, from a documentary that I have also up on my YouTube channel. Uh, and I explored it a good bit in... in um, play all night. I explored a good bit and other things too. The People's Band. That's the Allman Brothers Band right there. Long live the ABB.